128 gigabyte SSD uh, surface mounted to the actual printed circuit board of the surface so data. I'm going to and extract uh, the data from the device uh, it's good to know that um, it is also BitLocker encrypted uh, which is pretty normal for any Surface Pros or Surface laptops out there uh, or, or owned and run by Microsoft but um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I remove these so I'm just going to quickly flux this chip I have a, a heat pad that I have heated up to a desired temperature uh, I have a heat gun hot air heat gun as well and I'm going to remove the component with this little suction pad here once I get it up to the temperature to to be able to remove it cleanly so let's begin should see the uh, flux starting to bubble I'm looking for signs that the solder is getting soft or shiny to a point that uh, I'm able to remove it I'm going to use the hot air gun to create the heat to get through this evenly from top and bottom and as soon as I see the desired effect I'm looking for I shall remove the chip and I'm starting to see that starting to appear around the chip itself the solder is getting a, a shiny glow to it I will see if it's ready there we go so now that I've removed the chip I uh, look to see if there's any contact bridges I'm not seeing anything under first glance but I, I like to put it under the under the microscope uh, just to double check everything uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, do this quickly if I can as I like to just add a little bit more flux to the surface so I get no contact points and what I'll do is uh, put this back onto the heat pad like so and uh, let the flux do its work because what I want is a very even flow of contact on this so what I'll do is uh, want an even surface to prep with to put it on the reader so I'll let the chip cool down for a moment let me put that down so now that I've removed the actual chip from the printed circuit board uh, I will look under a microscope to make sure I have no bridges or anything that's going to uh, cause any shorts uh, I have a surface mount reader here that I'm going to use to put this particular chip on and hopefully get access to the device so let me just quickly check the the chip and uh, put this in so just bear with me I'm off camera here but it's just a, a microscope that I'm quickly looking under just to see that there's a uh, there isn't anything that's bridged or that my uh, surfaces is nice, uh, nice and even and yeah it appears to be clean so what I was checking uh, is just these ball mounts I want them to be uh, even uh, I can desolder this and remove them uh, but what we do here is if, I've, if, it, if it's nice and smooth and I've got an even pull uh, then I'm quite happy to uh, put this particular component into our reader like so oh, be with me I'm just working over a bit of heat here okay so like this uh, lock it into place and uh, then I shall proceed with uh, putting this into uh, a PCI Express slot 
and seeing if I can actually get access to reading the chip. So after attempting to read the surface mount uh, SSD, uh, there was uh, some slight fluctuations in the in the ball uh, solder uh, ball contact. So what I've what I've decided to do is uh, put it into my little chip clamp here, and I'm just going to remove the solder completely uh, using the soldering wick. And what I'll do is uh, reflux the the chip gently and see if I can get a more even surface I like to show when we have uh, certain problems with things you know it's uh, it's good to watch something happen uh, rather than uh, something that's being staged or 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 made to, to look so perfect so um, I'm just gonna see if this is hot enough here and it appears to be nice and hot you can see the solder coming through the wick and I'm gently going to go over the chip surface and you can see that I'm getting a nice clean desoldering surface as I run this over and then I'll put it back into my surface mount reader and have another go it actually looked pretty good under the microscope when I first took it off. Maybe you could call it being a bit lazy. But no harm, no foul. Here we go, starting to look good. Right, you can see the, the wick there with a nice even amount of solder on it. Uh, the chip's looking much better uh, so instead of having the the ball contacts of, of solder on there I've now removed them so we'll put this back in the reader and see how we do Hi, so we just did an interesting recovery on a uh, Surface laptop and uh, many times we we get these recoveries in because the motherboards failed and, and the NAND's on board. It's a surface mounted NAND chip. It's not a removable uh, solid state drive or an M2 or an NVMe, NVMe drive. And you may find that if you do see this up in the upper right hand corner of your Surface Pro, if the screen is still coming up, you'll see in the corner a very small icon that looks like this. And it shows uh, a little drive-like image with an X through it. And that's an indication that the NAND chip that serves as the storage device on your Surface Pro or Surface Laptop is failing. And when that happens, um, that's because we're getting uh, NANDware and we're going to have a very slow time of it getting through the data if it is recoverable. We just did that job or this job. The NAND had a lot of wear and the clone process was taking quite some time. So as opposed, in opposed to uh, going through and cloning the entire NAND chip, we decided that it would be the best course of action for everyone involved if we were able to just go ahead and get the customer's data directly. So with every Microsoft device that uh, you purchase from them, it's going to come with BitLocker encryption. So we had to then uh, enter the BitLocker recovery key. We were able to propagate the user uh, file system. And uh, to make sure that we were recovering all the data because we did encounter some errors, uh, we went through and it 
and scan the master file table and the index allocations. And you can see here we, we did it a few times because sometimes the drive would actually time out. Uh, so after completely scanning all the master file table entries and all the index allocations, we were sure that we had all the user data. In this case, they were looking for pictures and we were able to recover all of them. One of the good things about using um, a tool like this, the PC3000, is that when we do encounter an error or we have a bad sector in one of the files or multiple bad sectors, we're able to find out what's affected and put it into a, pol a folder called problem. Fortunately, in this instance, there was only a handful of files that were affected and then put into the problem folder. And they were zipped files or zip files, compressed files of a photo shoot. And fortunately, um, we're able to repair zip files and extract the contents of them. So in essence, there was very little damage and the customer was real happy with us. Um, and we were very happy with the recovery as well. But if you do notice this icon, it is going to, um, it does have to deal, um, essentially it's not saying you have a bad motherboard, it's not saying anything else other than you have some problems with the storage device itself. It's real hard to see. It's going to be up in the right hand corner. Um, so if you see this with your Surface Laptop or your Surface Pro, um, this is indication that your NAND chip, um, your onboard NAND storage is failing. Fortunately, we were able to do a chip off, put it into our USB. We have the uh, ability to do it through USB or NVMe. NVMe would be a little zippier if it were, let's say, something we were recovering uh, because the motherboard itself is bad and the storage um, is in relatively good shape, we would be able to do it a little bit quicker through NVMe. But uh, this is 119 gigabytes. That took uh, well over a week to recover. You can see the storage size right there. You can also see as we're going through some of the uh, beginning of the drive and some of the master file table entries, um, we saw a little bit of erroring. One of the things that does happen with us occasionally is that you may want to go through it if you are ever in a situation where you're using a PC3000 trying to recover this, that you may want to go over these bad reads a couple times because sometimes the cells are not completely worn. Um, and if on a, a second read retry or a third read retry, um, when you're going through um, the read of each page, you might be able to get uh, some of these cells to read. But um, other than that, uh, we uh, uh, were very uh, pleased with the recovery. Um, we can tell that, hey, here's the partition sector. Everything's not going to be encrypted until you get to the um, actual NTFS boot sector that has the encryption. And uh, when we get here, and if we look th at this uh, through the unlocked virtual drive, um, we're able to see everything as it should be. There's the NTFS boot sector. View it as a NTFS boot sector. Tells us where the master file table is going to start. That's 786432. And uh, times that by 8. And we will go out and see the first NFT entry. And we know everything's intact and where it's supposed to be within the file system. But just a quick look at that. And uh, if you do have a problem with a Surface a laptop, a Surface Pro, it's something that we definitely can help you out with.